Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is based on Final Fantasy XV. In the game, Noctis has the ability to do a fast warp strike on his enemies. My goal for this project is to try and create a similar effect using Unity. These are the steps I needed to follow to create the warp strike. Find the proper animations to use on the character actions. Make the character and sword move towards the target. And recreate the shaders and effects. So just like in the last project, I downloaded some animations I needed on Mixamo like a run and sword slash animation. I also followed this tutorial from Filmstorm to create a third person control camera. After the animations were implemented, I downloaded a model of Noctis Sword by Vanessa AL on Sketchfab and attached it to my character's model. Before working on my main script, I downloaded Dutsween to my project. So to make the character move towards the target, I simply used Dutsween's Do Move. Since the warp happens on a specific frame on the animation, I used an animation event on the slash motion to call my warp function. To make the player model disappear while moving, I go through all of the skin mesh renderers in the character and disable them. And when the warp is complete, they activate again. In the game, Noctis throws his sword before he warps. So to replicate that, I detach the sword from the player by setting its parent to null and move it towards the target using do move. To create the projections Noctis leaves behind when warping, I simply instantiate a copy of the player without the animator and most of its components. To work on the shaders, I wanted to use Shader Graph, and for that, I installed the lightweight render pipeline to my project. Shader Graph is a visual way of creating shaders using a node system. So in my case, I wanted to create two types of shaders. One that would be a transparent surface with glow and another with an opaque surface and also glow. On the first shader, I set the surface to transparent and the blend mode to additive. After that, I used the Fresnel effect node in both the albedo and emission properties multiplied by a color property to make it have a bluish tint. Then on my script, I just changed the material of the ghost projection to the new material with that custom shader. The second shader has a similar structure to the first one, but instead of a transparent surface, it has an opaque surface. For this shader, I created a Vector4 property to control the amount of glow it has so I can make it appear after the warp is complete and fade away after a while. I added some basic particle effects to make the warp look a little bit better. In the game, the sword only shows up when the warp strike starts, so I only make its mesh render active when the warp begins, and when it's finished, I use the custom transparent shader to make it fade away. After that, I created a simple system that would detect which target was the nearest to the camera center and set it to be the main target. That enabled me to recreate the UI elements from the game and overlay them over the current target. I populated the scene with some enemies with animations that reacted to the warp strike. For some polish, I added some post processing like Bloom and Death of Field. I also added some screen shake when the warp is finished by using Cinemachine's Impulse Source. To add a bit more of a velocity effect, I used the Lens Distortion property on the post processing effects while the warp is happening. After a bit of adjustments, this is how it turned out. As always, the link for the project's repository is on the description below. If you have anything you would like to see being made on a video, let me know in the comments or feel free to reach me out on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it with friends, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll see you in the next one.